Hey guys, I'm Alan Kavorkov from BeTheClaw.com, coming to you from the Lucky Crane. Uh, this is part two of the Frankenstein Claw Replacement Project. In the first part, I, I showed you how I replaced all the parts in this machine uh, with uh, Greyhound components. And after playing for a little while, I realized that there were still some things that needed to be replaced. Uh, if you haven't seen the first part, you can find it here. And if you have, um, I'd like to show you the problem that I ran into and what I did to fix it. So let's check it out. For the most part, the machine was working perfectly fine, except every once in a while, depending on where the claw was dropped, on the way back, uh, the whole assembly would uh, derail and I would have to open the machine and uh, manually put it back on the tracks so that it could come back to the home position. Uh, after doing some measurements, uh, I realized that the rails that the claw was riding on uh, were a little too thick, so I decided to replace uh, both rails uh, with the smaller ones. Removing the rails was pretty easy. Uh, they were held in place with, uh, with a bolt on each end, so once the bolt was uh, removed, then uh, the rails would come out of the machine. I needed to find something that had a threaded hole on each end so that I could secure it back in place. The only thing that I was able to find were curtain rods at, a, at the local hardware store, which did have the threaded holes on each end so that I could uh, bolt them back into the machine. And now these uh, curtain rod ends were a little too wide for the bracket, so I had to turn it around so that they would fit properly. And here's how the two pieces came together. Once that end was installed into the bracket, I placed it into the machine so that I, I could see where uh, it needed to be cut. Now you can see how long that actually was. Uh, I used some tape to mark uh, the spot where it needed to be trimmed. Uh, then I used some, or tried using some uh, garden cutters, uh, which weren't quite meant for aluminum. They work well on bushes and branches, but um, all I was able to do is just uh, bend the material a little bit. It's kind of hard to see here, though. Uh, then I just used some um, smaller cutters to finish the job. Uh, I used the same cutters to uh, trim uh, the uh, end of the rod so that it would fit into the hole in the bracket. I also had to um, uh, fold it in a little bit just to make sure that uh, it fits snugly into the opening. And once it was in, I installed uh, both brackets into the machine and bolted them in. And here you can see the final product. So I did the same thing uh, to the other rail on the other side. And we are all done. So let's try it out. It might be kind of hard to see here, but it's definitely a lot more solid. Um, definitely a lot, a lot better. Um, the rails uh, are a lot better fit for for the uh, for the wheels that the the claw assembly rides on. I tried it quite a few times, and uh, everything was working pretty well. Well guys, that's all I have for today. I realize that you probably will never have to replace the rails on your machine, but um, I still uh, hope that you found it interesting. Uh, one more thing, I recently came across uh, a keychain, and it's probably the coolest keychain I've ever seen. It's a uh, toy soldier claw machine, 
Uh, has little uh, plastic teddy bears on the side. There's a claw, and I have it customized with uh, my uh, website on the front and on the back. Um, one of the coolest uh, little gizmos I've ever found. Uh, so um, if you are interested in uh, getting one of these, stay tuned for my next video in which I will uh, give you more details. Also, if you have a, a YouTube channel or a website uh, with claw videos, and if you'd like to have one customized for yourself, I'll, uh, I'll let you know about that as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.